the McDonald Juicy Scoop. Hello and welcome to Juicy Scoop. I have one of our favorites, Sarah Coloni, here with me. Hello. Hey, hey girl. <laughs> so nice to see oh, you. What's in the oh, corner what's here? Oh my gosh. Is that my book? It's one of her two books, you guys. If you guys didn't know, Sarah Colonna also has two fabulous books for summer fun time reading. Classic, hilarious, slutty, drunk stories. <laughs> Just <laughs> timeless. True. That is timeless. Timeless, fun Pre and a chapter about a dead cat. Oh, yes. That's yeah. one of my favorites. So uplifting reads for the summer. Rest in peace. But it did have a very long life. Is it? <laughs> it really did. Um, All right. Let's get into this because you and I were texting about it. I'm like, please come in Monday. Jada Pinkett Smith. Will Smith, you know, they have been this golden couple for they were dressing alike before J Lo and A Rod were. Remember, That's they true. would do like color coordinated red carpet stuff. That's true. <laughs> and I and I feel like she's like so she's like a like she's pretty short, right? Like she's petite, she's very like petite, very tiny. That's the word. Yes, yeah. and he's very tall. I always yeah. feel like she would like, you know, she's like always like running behind him on the red carpet, like doing like day, like trying to be like, hey, I'm up here too. Like yes. just, and I think he, like, like towers over her. I think like 10, 12 years, like or even like 10, 15 years ago. They were the Chrissy Teigen, John Legend. Yes. At relationship goals. They're funny. They're teasing each other. You know, he had a, a son from his first marriage. She called him. She was the one who kind of coined the phrase bonus son and great. St oh, we all get along. Yeah. And they like wrote a sitcom about like being a blended family that, you know, other people were starring in it, but they EP'd. Everyone Wait, what was, was that show? I just remember it maybe was short lived, but I remember like reading articles about how they were EPing the show based on their lives their life. when the boy was like 10 and he was going in between the houses and like. Well, I had to do that. Nobody gave me a show. <laughs> I've got, I got a bonus set of parents. Where's my show? Well, make it happen. Talk to them because they now they have a whole nother show they could write they about. Do. So. This is the news came out. Now, we've there's been rumors about their marriage for years. Are they swingers? Do they have an open marriage? Does uh, is, is she bisexual? Is he bisexual? Will there was a rumor about him having a more than a uh, bro friendship with Tisha Campbell's husband? Oh, I forgot about that story. There yeah, was that's some right. like they were best friends, but like they were such best friends that he also bought him like a Rolls. And people are like, oh, that's a really close friendship. <laughs> close. Not saying it happened, saying it was a rumor. That was the rumor. Yeah. That was a rumor that went on a few years ago. And then. Well, because they started calling themselves life partners. Yes. Like they changed the phrase of marriage. So that kind of like felt like every, they were saying, we're partners. We're not necessarily married. And, you know, like. She said, we don't, we're not going to celebrate our wedding anniversaries anymore because we're life partners. Right. So it kind of made it seem like it's saying, yeah. like, we're yeah. open to open for business. And then he <laughs> said, there's nothing that Jada can do that will make me leave this life partnership. Right. I mean, I, it, it just sounds like that's like yes. I would interpret that as we're we're DTF. <laughs> yeah. We're down to fuck other people besides just each other. And she could, and then even on the Red Table once they showed a clip from the Red Table, which is a really popular show. On Facebook, and now they do a podcast version of it, which is her, her mother, and her daughter, and then Will was on, and he's like, and they denied, they said, there's been rumors about us being swingers. We've never been swingers. No, that's a whole other lifestyle. That's not us. Oh. But we're life partners, and what he, if he, whatever he does, he can do it at the other end of the house, providing he's at the other end of the house. And what I do, but the point is, we come back. To the house or something. You right, know, right. We come back to the house. We live in the house. We die in the house. And this is the house. Right. And well, yeah. so I mean, maybe they're trying to say like, no, we're not swingers. We don't go to key parties, but we're both able to have sex with whoever we want. But we're just not swingers because that and, involves like you being doing it together. Right? I think it's like we can have sex with wh whoever we want, but you're we're each other's number one we right. see each other right <laughs> you would say and <laughs> and we're never going to leave each other for the person that we're currently right. having sex with well i mean it's kind of like you always say about threesomes like nobody wants to be in a threesome because somebody ends up sitting on the end of the bed getting left out so and maybe that's him yeah and this and is who this got on the edge of the bed crying alone left out so this guy august alicina um he i guess is a singer 
And he said, he's, very handsome. I don't he's think only I 27. He's and he said um, that Will Smith gave him his blessing to have a relationship with Jada Pinkett Smith. And now he's saying, my truth is my truth. So he went on this show, Jasmine Brand, which I follow it. It's a, a blog. And I guess now she does like a talk show. And um, I mean, it was some juicy ass scoop. I will say that. So they said, um, okay, so. It's just truth and parent truth and transparency makes us uncomfortable. But yes, I can apologize for that. Is what um, he went on there and said. Like I have a relation. I've had a relationship. Like he's like he's like fully in love with Jada Pinkett Smith. In love. He's like he's like I'm in love with her. And he's like I sat down with Will beforehand and asked permission to you know. And he gave me his blessing. And and then, uh, and then the thing I saw was. So there, his the older son, the bonus son, her stepson, and he were friends, right? And it sounds like that's kind of how they met. The he came on a trip with them on the private jet for a month on some big vacation, and it sounds like it happened then, and it went on for a few years. And it sounds like, you know, she's gorgeous. I mean, she's got a great body. She is she's, so pretty. She's like flawless. Flawless. She's. I think she's probably great in the sack. Yeah. And the petite uh, girls, they you know, oh, they're spinners. Get, they, they really spin get spin around that. <laughs> they can spin around that dick. They can do some tricks. Spinners. And then she's also like really spiritual and like I could see her like you know like teaching him like how to last longer and oh, like yeah. things like that. Like he probably only like you had really, a couple. You've really thought from, about oh, this. I, <laughs> I've seen why this May December romance between the woman and him and why he is like obsessed with her. And then I think at one point after a couple of years she's like back yeah. to my life partnership. I taught you now, child. Yeah, now get out now there. Now and... find a woman that you know how to satisfy, you know how to treat her right, you know how to meditate with her, you know how to make her a great green tea. Right. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. And he's like devastated. Yeah. So he goes on the talk show, the Jasmine and he does brand. say it's over, right? He said it was over or did That's how I understand I, it. It's sounded, over. Yeah. And um they had all these Instagram posts. He added to each that other. his heart has no malice or hate towards anyone on this planet. I just simply want the chains off and I'm willing to die getting there. The gift of freedom is yours to have. God promises that, but only if you're willing. Explaining that he would never lie. He seemingly shared that everyone was contacted prior to his interview with Angela Lee, who is the girl that interviewed him on the show. With that being said, I should also say that no one was sideswiped by any conversation. Everyone got courtesy calls. Time in advance, he concluded. So I want you to be um, him. Okay. And you have a couple people to call. Yeah. Who are you calling? Obviously Jada. I call Jada first, for sure. Okay, okay. Hoping that she hasn't blocked my number. (laughs) Okay, so Uh. we're about, why is this table white? Can we get the red table in, please? <laughs> oh, someone's calling me. Hold on. Hey, August. What's going on? Hey, Jada. Um, so, listen, you haven't returned my phone calls for a year, but um, that's not why I'm calling you. I'm calling because I, I'm about to go on an interview to promote my new album, and um, I just, I just want to free the chains of love. What chains are we talking about? We're talking about the chains that we used in the bedroom nine months ago. We are talking about, yes, those and the ones around my heart. Okay. Um, And the chains around my heart were put there strategically by you uh, to toy with me. I mean, I appreciate all you've done for me. We're friends. We have a, a lot of Instagram posts about each other. But I just want, I need the chains off and I need to tell people that you that I'm in love with you, and that Will said that was cool. Well, boy, I appreciate you talking to me straightforward. I have made you, obviously, grow into the man. You sound like a southern belle. I I'm like trying it. to be a little southern. <laughs> I, I don't like really it. know Jada's voice, but I... I, it's, I it's, 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 strong. it's strong. It's strong. It's strong. Yeah. I'm going to make it strong. I have taught you to be the man to satisfy women from all generations. Yes. Mine included. So the female population can thank me for that. Whoever you're with can thank me. Um, I am not pleased with your decision to speak, but your tongue 
is the tongue that you choose to go you down remember. on me with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get sassy. Okay, sorry. Uh, or talk to someone of media. Um, I'm not pleased about it, but I, uh, I give you my blessing. Thank you. So and I can free the chains. Yes. Okay. And, uh, and then you're going to like not deny this and make me look bad, right? You're going to say, like, well, I loved him, too. Um, I-, I will think about that. I need to speak to my life partner well, I, about oh, this. The one that I asked permission to have sex with you? That guy? Uh, yeah. Right. And he said yes, just so we're... He's... I'm just recording this conversation. I... Is that... <laughs> Um, we're about to film right now. My daughter Willow uh, is um, waving her hair around. <laughs> that song. Whip my hair back and yeah, forth. Yeah, she doesn't have any more hair. She whipped it so much that it actually fell out. And she's coming back and she's going to be here. And I need to explain to her and my mother that I was fucking a 27 year old friend of my stepson's for two years. And now it's coming out on the Jasmine brand. So give me a minute and um, have a blessed day. Oh, okay. Bye. Okay, so now <laughs> I'm going to call Will. Okay. Um, can we hold for five? Uh, sure. And then on the I'll phone it just says life partner. Yeah. She doesn't oh, yeah. have Will or anything. LP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is this LP? Is this LP? Okay. ding a ling a ling uh, Hey, Jada. That's my Will Smith impression. Okay. I hope everybody likes it. Hey, LP. Um, it's your LP. Hey, LP. Um, what's up? Well, today is not a great day, but it might be a monumental day in our life partnership. Oh, uh, bigger than when we declared ourselves life partners? Uh, Yes. You remember the young gentleman I was fucking for two and a half years, August Alasina? Yes, the one that asked me permission to have sex with you, and I said sure. Well, you know it enhanced our lives together. I thought I enhanced his. Yes. I thought we left on great terms. Yep. I sent him off with uh, great tips on how to give a woman orgasm, meditate with her, make her a great green tea. And um, and didn't you buy him a Rolls Royce, too? Or, no, that was me. I bought my friend one. Wait. You're very good friend. Right, right. You're very, right. very, very Forgot. good friend. Um, and uh, anyway, um, great news. He is... Uh, Finding his own truth, and th- that truth is fucking telling on us. Oh. Yeah. He's going to tell? Yep. Okay. Well. So. I'm just going to deny it. Do whatever you want, Will. You're my life partner. There's nothing that you could say or do that would make me leave this fucking house. Also, because it's a really big fucking house. That's true, and it's nice because you can be on one side, and I can be on the other side. That's right. And then we just hit, meet in the kitchen. If if we don't want to, we have two separate kitchens. That's right. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> um, and there's a red table in each. Right. Always a red so, table. Sometimes I don't want to film on your side of the house. So I had a red table <laughs> put in my kitchen and a red table put in your kitchen. And um, my mother loves you like a son-in-law. And that's not going to change. Thank you. So we're just going to deny this, right? Yes. Okay, LP. I got to get to set. And now I'm going to do one more call. <laughs> To my Red Table producer. Um, oh. Hey, we need to do an emergency episode um, okay, of well, the Red I'm... Table, because i got to come to the Red Table and speak my Red Table truth. But, and you're just going to talk to yourself, right? Yes. I'm basically going to tell everybody um, that I was doing a service to a young gentleman okay. who didn't know how to love a woman. Okay. And that um, I didn't mean to break his heart. I didn't think it was a kind of a heart thing. I thought it was more of a dick thing. Right. And um, he's going to be okay because of it, because Will and I bless him. Willow's aware of it. What's the other one's name? Jaden is aware. Right. Oh, yes, I forgot my son's name. Jaden is aware of it, and it's going to be um, It's going to be great. Well, that's cool. I mean, the red table's here. There's nothing to really set up if you just want to come in. I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know why it. you're... I don't know why you're making it like. Can seem you like set it's a it up deal. on like, my side of my kitchen, the red uh, table, not Will's? Yeah, I mean it's already. Kind of pissed at him right now. Oh, okay. Because, but he's still your life partner. Oh yeah. Okay. He's my life partner. We, you know, but now we have to. You know. Okay, so I'll have uh, the table move to the other side of the house, and we're ready to shoot. So. Okay, I'll be there. Okay. We just. You should call this white table talk. <laughs> With your white table. 
<laughs> it dares looks just like it's like a lacquer like this. It is kind of genius. Like just to, like just you just put a table like you just call it that and then it's becomes like a thing. It was like very catchy branding for some reason. I think it's great. Like the triple generation. I, all yeah, of that. I know. No, I but know. I'm I love excited. it. Why should I want to see her talk? Yeah. I and, why, and why not bring more attention to her show? This is the one thing they can do in quarantine. Who knows how long they're going to be in there for. So like keep it going. A lot of people know about it. that didn't know about the show before. And the cat's out of the bag. So the best thing to do is just she should just say it. So my prediction is she will say it. Yes. I had a sexual, very open, loving thing when I was together with him. It we we, we weren't inf- affectionate in front of Will because that would be disrespectful. But we did have our weekends and our nights alone, and then I'd come back to my family. But do you really think she'll say that now that Will's denied it? Because I, I think she'll say she'll... Will denied it because he didn't know where I stood, and he was protecting me, his life partner. Oh, oh. That's, but with, since okay. we've talked and and. August didn't lie, and August doesn't deserve to be ever called a liar in any respect. And so now we're coming out with the truth that, yes, we have a – I don't want to like call it an open marriage because I like branding my own thing, yeah. like this red table. So right. I'm branding this as a life partnership, life partnership, and in a life partnership, you can fuck who you want. Well – I think that's genius if that's the if that's the way she says why Will does that. That's a good prediction. Yes. The why he pr- denied yes, it. Yes, because he just thought. And also, I have... like, but it's like if they did, it's like it's, you know, what he said. I mean, it's juicy, but I feel like, and everyone kind of said, like, I think we all knew they had an open marriage or everyone thought they did at least, even if we're all dead wrong somehow. So it's like they don't have anything to be, like, embarrassed of. You know what I mean? Like, it's kind of like why not, if, if you just talk wonder, about it, it's not embarrassing because it's just, the like, what you're doing. I wonder if there it's was an NDA. Upon. Wouldn't you think there'd be an NDA? If you're going to have, like, your housekeeper sign an NDA, you're not going to have the 27-year-old that you're agreeing to fuck sign an NDA? Or did he break the NDA and then they know that now – when you can't really enforce an NDA, otherwise you look like a weirdo asshole because all these other yeah. NDAs are now being thrown away from the Harvey Weinstein case or the Epstein case. Yeah. So I think he probably signed one, didn't give a shit. I think she stopped answering his calls. I think it was one of those things, you know, when you like kind of want to get someone out of your life that's like a little – and then you're like, okay, and less calls, less – less, and right. then finally you're like, I'm just not going to answer that call anymore. And then he started to freak out. Yeah. And then he went on the show. Yeah, because I wonder if he's still friends with the son, then is he still actually really in their lives or not? Or maybe he was slowly getting phased out. Like you know saying. who would be really juicy to talk to? Is Will's first wife. Who, by the way, just remembered, she's Garcelle from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, newest cast member. They're friends. She just made an appearance having lunch with Garcelle on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Can you imagine her what she's talking about with Garcelle right uh, now? Like, holy shit, wait, girl. How, how long were they married? Brief. Like, I think by the time the kid was like two or three, they were no longer together. And so there was never, I don't think there was ever many issues between her and Jada, but there's always going to be some. Right. And so then to have this come out as they bragged about being the most in-connection couple forever – I think that she's probably a little satisfied. Right. That's true. There's got to be a little satisfaction to it. Like, I don't need you guys to break up, but I'm kind of glad the world knows the truth. Right. That, that you know, in their mind, it's an ideal marriage, but it's not an ideal marriage to the rest of the world. And so be it. But, like, I think to someone that, you know, this is her ex and this is the second wife, you're kind of like, yeah, let people fucking know the truth. You're not the the legends. You're not, you know, Paul Newman and his wife. Right. You oh, guys no, are this. In, they were an open. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> I just start making up things about Paul Newman. What? Well, like there, you know, there's a certain couples that everyone thinks. And again, it's fine. It's like, yeah, that's probably why they are staying together yeah, well, this whole time. Yeah, well, especially when it's agreed. If it's agreed upon, like, good for yeah. you to do your thing. There's no, yeah. it's none of our business. But, I don't, yeah. But you're right. I wonder if he did sign an NDA. But I'm kind of surprised. Some people, like, sometimes people don't think about that like I didn't have to sign an NDA when I was writing Demi Lovato's book which I mean I didn't learn anything that everyone doesn't already know you know what I mean but I thought it was kind of interesting they never had me sign anything when I was like meeting with her you would almost think they'd be like you can't talk about this outside of like I think people even a couple years ago 
it wasn't in the forefront of their minds like there it is now. I think right. now with these other cases like Harvey Weinstein, Epstein, and things, and and more and more stuff is coming out that like you know people are signing them before they even go to a dinner party and go to think. I think they've just become a much more commonplace thing. Do you and Peter have one whenever people come to your house? No, no. not when they come to our house. <laughs> but no, I mean we we didn't in the beginning. But I think Kelly signed. We had Kelly sign one. Right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Because you're like around. Yeah. I mean, I don't need her talking about that I didn't make up my bed or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> the juicy topics of how, how unkempt your <laughs> your bedroom is. But only because people, you know, then we were like, oh, I guess why not? You know, why not do this? You right. know, no, why no, not it's... have it? And, you know, just because you never know. But certainly if I was going to engage in screwing someone with Peter's blessing. Oh, yeah. No, that would. I would definitely, definitely want him to sign an NDA. <laughs> yeah. When you get into that territory, I feel like. And not even just. And even if you're like not trying to hide it, even if you're like we're in a life partnership and letting people interpret that however you're not trying to hide it. It's just the like the NDA for the fact that you don't want juicy details of like anything in their home. You know, I don't know. You yeah, just never no, know. I just think it's like say. a smart thing to do. Yeah. But I but also I heard it's really not if there's if there's certain things that go on then then it becomes it, like null and void yeah, or something, right? So it's yeah. like but this one, I definitely think he if he'd sign it, he definitely broke it. Yeah. But what are they going to do? Then sue him for it and look like assholes? Right. You just have so to... no, you're just gonna have to go, okay, cat's out of the bag. And, and like we're, we're gonna like... just address it now. Like because I kind of forgot now I was looking up Instagram posts that she had a couple about him and he had like they were openly like very proud of, you know, being really close and being right. you know, so it's... And he was also on the show once. Oh, right. And like praising her, and you taught me, and but it it seemed like a a mother son admiration or aunt woman like right. mentor and, kind of a thing. Yeah, I don't think anyone thought they were boning. But as it's you like, like a to sexually say. like a sexual mentor is the way I see it. Yes, that's what it sounds like. You have yeah. a, I love you. I look how excited your eyes just light up. Well, you, I think it's like, kind of like I think Heather you know, wants to be someone sexual was, mentor. Was, he wasn't a kid. He was no, 25. No, yeah. She was probably 45 at the time or 40. I mean, she's so pretty. And so it's like yeah. Yeah, get your But I do feel like yeah, did he get hurt in the end? Yeah, he did, you know. But oh well, that's what happens. But I kind of feel like that's to be expected, especially like he sounds like a nice like sensitive guy too. So you can't of course he's going to fall in love with Jada Pinkett Smith. Wait, like, where? she's strong and gorgeous and, like, all these things. So, yeah, that's what's going to for sure happen. Hold on. I'm confused. I think I might be in love with her. Let's oh. talk about this. I, I mean. Great Fourth of July. Uh, Kanye. Kanye's running. First of all, okay. For president, you guys, in case you didn't know. That you could just tweet and become a running. Like, he, it's, he can't be on the ballot. It's too late. Okay. He hasn't filed paperwork. Oh. At least according to what I'm reading. Um, okay. You know, I'm no presidential expert, but mm -hmm. um, he's, it's definitely too late in like six states or something to even be on the ballot. And then you have like and then the, then they were like, it's unclear if he's filed the correct paperwork. Like you can't just be like, I'm running for president. And then and nobody else in the family tweeted anything like you know, getting getting my glam squad ready for inaugural day, or you know, I'm going to make some brownies in the White House. Like, no, none of them are Kim doing that. The the uh, you know, she retweeted it and just tweeted an American flag over his tweet. That was her showing support, I guess. Yeah, she was just probably like, okay. I saw someone commented underneath her tweet, and they were like, uh, "There's like other ways to get him out of the house, girl." <laughs> like, and that made me laugh. Because she's probably just like, sure, go be president. Just I know. Get the fuck yes. out of the house. I think a lot of people are just like with their husbands, like, whatever. You want to you want to spend our savings so that you can go buy a dirt bike and go fall off and have a mountain lion yeah. eat you? Go. Just get out. Go. <laughs> yeah. Go be president. Yeah. Go. I mean, do whatever you want. Go take. Just, yeah. Yeah. Maybe he's going to fool well, he's, us all. And I don't well, know. He's going to be well thought out. <laughs> but it doesn't. I think he just. You know, tweeted but it Caitlyn had posted Caitlyn Jenner in a in a cute Gap knit dress that he was also taking over the Gap. He they just assigned him to help save the Gap, which so I he's thought president was of Gap and the United States. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a big. That's a lot. No, I did. Yeah, he like because he worked for them when he was younger or something. I don't know. He... I mean, what I've heard about with Gap is that the 
the philosophy of why it's suffering is because younger people really want uh, individual looks and very individual stuff. And when Gap was really popular in the 90s, everybody had that same jean shirt on. And you were yeah, like, the same pants yes, the I same. loved it for like when the kids were little. I loved Gap Kids because it was like Gap affordable and cute. cute. Yeah. And, you know, so no, I haven't been doing a Gap in a long time. You know but... what I liked about Gap the most? What? Their sizing. Why? They Because like <laughs> they would be, they were like, they ran big. So like. When oh, so I, you got an ego boost every time you yeah, went. Yeah. So I would wear it like there were times where I'd buy like a size four pant when I probably should have been a six or, you know. Did they have the that uh, kind of situation? That's what I liked about them. And did they also. So if he can b- bring that back, I'll let him run for president. Do they also have the uh, the magic mirrors? You know how there's certain clothing stores where it's literally a magic mirror or it's tilted in a way. The tilting house. You're that. like, I just um, lost 12 pounds and I'm an inch taller. Yeah, it's tilted <laughs> almost like when you do a photo from above. Right. That's, but I don't, they probably did, but I don't think I've been in a dressing room that wasn't completely fucking upsetting in <laughs> years. So I don't even, I just shop online now because I can't. I've it. been where I'm like, uh, what's up with your fucking mirror to like yeah. the ladies working there? I'm like, um, well, Okay, like sometimes just they admit dim the it. lights, do something. No, they admit it. No, I'll, they'll admit that it's like a an fun altered house. mirror. <laughs> yes, a funhouse mirror. <laughs> so you're not concerned that he's. Wait, I'm, hold on. Where, I'm, I'm concerned. Where, how did he, I lose this? I'm hold concerned that he thinks album. that's how it works. And like I said, maybe Sarah. he has. Okay, a, got it. Maybe he's got it well thought out, and maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's filed all his paperwork. Um, but according to everyone that was doing any. Uh, research on it or asking like he just he, I think he just thinks you can tweet it and then people will write him in now if we write him in do I have to write in ye or Yeezy or oh, Kanye you're right. that's hard so how will they know who the votes for I think it's Kanye Yeezus West someone said that there was someone um, on a ballot uh, as a Green Party candidate right now as they, they researched to see if he's done his you know filing or whatever and there is somebody on the ballot named Kanye D's Nuts West. So someone got their name on that name on there somehow. Yeah. But I don't think it was him. I don't think he's going by D's Nuts trying to remember. I think he will just he will do write it in yeah. and it'll be a fun publicity thing. But honestly, I don't think the people that are gonna go wait in line and get and actually vote, though you could do it by mail, I don't think enough people are gonna waste their vote just to be ironic. I mean, let's hope not. Okay. <laughs> let's please hope not. Now, this was some juicy scoop. This is Morgan Stewart from the Daily Pop, and she used to be on Beverly Rich Kids of Beverly Hills. Right. And she was married to her co-star. They got divorced, um, and now she is engaged to uh, Jordan McGraw, Phil McGraw's younger son, youngest son, Dr. Phil's youngest oh. son. Yes. Wait, is that him? That is Jordan McGraw. And a lot of people don't know he's a singer. No. He um, has opened for the Jonas Brothers. And, but he's kind of, he's cute. Oh, yeah. And not what I expected Dr. Phil's son to look like. Like he looks like a little, um, I don't know why, but Dr. Phil always looks a little more like he just looks so buttoned up. Like this guy looks like, well, he's got, he's got some tats. He's the singer. Yeah. You know, okay. scruffy. And the older brother is more of a, a business guy. And okay. so he's the singer of the family. And, um, oh, look, they got some takeout there. They, oh. Anyway, so they're happy. She, They got engaged. How it's, long have they been together? I don't know. Apparently not very long. Okay. It, it, there's so many quarantine divorces. This is like the first quarantine. Somehow they came over for a date. I think that was maybe the night that Gavin said stay inside. Right. And then they fell in love. <laughs> and then, I don't know. But they, it's but then Kelly said she read that, that Morgan mentioned that they had dated or knew each other like 11 years ago. Oh. Then reconnected. And let me just tell you something. The McGraws have a shit ton of money. Phil McGraw has a huge, besides his own TV show, he's got multiple media platforms and he's he has multiple like, TV deals. What do you think deals. his net worth is? How much? I'm going to, hold it, let me guess. I'm gonna guess, according to the internet, which they're never they're not no. necessarily right. I'm gonna guess uh, 224 million. Okay, that sounds like a reasonable guess. And they have a private jet that the family oh, can use, right. which I think a rich kid of Beverly. What is it? Well, according to his 
four hundred forty million, according to Celebrity. Holy Net. shit! So they have the private I jet. Never, like, I mean, I knew they had a lot of money, but I never like put four. I mean, the amount of books and the right. amount of time that that show has been on, and I'm sure he has a a very smart deal where he's ownership syndication, right. multiple so shows. They did the doctors. They did the speaking range. They have the podcast platform. All this stuff, the the products. Robin has her thing. So I think, I think it's a great move for Morgan. I think he's a delight. He's raised by Dr. Phil that constantly talks about the way you show your child. The best thing that you can do to your child is to love their mother. They've been married uh, forever. So I right. think you're entering into like an uh, actually like healthy, good family. Okay. That has a shit ton of money that can also give you your own talk show. Oh, which yeah, I'm sure. sure is a goal of Morgan's being that she's the host of Daily Pop now, which is like, you know, and she's got a great personality. So I say congrats. You think she's signing a prenup? I'm sure, but she probably, yes. I'm sure there's some type of prenup right. happening on both sides. The problem, I mean, who knows? But you, she just went from rich to rich to richer. Oh, right. She was already rich. So I guess there's that's like. I mean, now she can. But along with marrying into a really wealthy family, it's a family that also has common interest that can help your career morgan mcgraw sounds nice. oh my god it sounds great yeah it does it sounds like a soap name kind of like morgan a, mcgraw like a villain in a like like in dynasty like she's today like next, on like, morgan mcgraw oh morgan I mean, mcgraw is a top morgan, show already yeah i'm i'm on your pilot episode don't yeah. feel awkward to have to ask me no i'm i don't care if you never use the segment i'm there i'll, I'll help you I'll it's go. obviously gonna come a show you want to be on it with i'll us? be with you i'll, I'll just carry your nda <laughs> i'll be the pro i'll be like your assistant that day Great. Morgan McGraw, I like it. Okay. Now we are gonna get into Galene Maxwell's what the fallout has happened since she has been arrested. Wait, that's her name? Galene Galene. I thought it I was Jislaine. Oh, Jislaine? Jelaine. It's Jelaine. Wait, no, but somebody else said it the way you just said it today, so I think you're right. I don't know. News. We're just gonna call her Maxwell. G for the G for this segment. Call her G Max. For, we're gonna call her G Max <laughs> for the rest of this uh segment. Now this is a crazy photo. Guys, subscribe to my YouTube page. All of this is on YouTube, and we have all the photos of things we're talking about. I don't know if this is doctored or what. This is Jean Bonnet. Yeah. Before she was obviously killed. And look who's in the corner. It looks just like G Max. Now, is this doctored? I don't know. I don't know either. But it is weird. And then, so this is some profile pictures that they've matched. But again, could it be doctored? I don't know. And this is Bill Clinton with uh, at the wedding of um, his daughter, Chelsea Clinton. And in the corner, we see that she is a prominent guest. Yeah, did you see when Eric Trump tweeted that over the weekend? And then everyone was like, oh, but there's, then there's 47 this. photos of no. your dad with him. And so then I have yeah. another photo because I'm an unbiased show here. Yes. I have another photo of, of course, the four of them together, which is Melania, Donald, and the two of them. Right. And uh, I don't know when that was taken. He he said he hadn't hung out with them in a very long time, but that doesn't I mean, look like that was that long ago, but it could have been like 10 or 12 years ago. Right. Um, I mean, either way, he we know that this- There's powerful like, people involved. Yeah. I think it crosses political lines. Yeah. And I think either way, we know that how, how the fuck Jeffrey Epstein was that rich, I still can't wrap my I brain know, around. I know. What? How? Oh, because- Everybody. Um, I mean, I assume it's like sex trafficking, which is awful, but that's what my no, assumption was. No, I don't think it's that. Oh. I think it's he's invited these rich, powerful men. And one thing that G Max said to someone who was just interviewed on Australia's 60 Minutes, this is a great, it's on my Juicy Scoop Obsessed. Australian 60 Minutes is like such a juicier 60 Minutes. <laughs> They're like yeah. younger hosts, everything about it. Anyway. They, right after she got um, arrested, they did an interview um, with some of these people. And one of this, one of the women that was, that knew that, knew her, says she's a horrible person. I don't really know her connection. She's like a socialite herself. But she said that G Max told her that that private plane that went from the Pedo Island, the Lido Express private plane yeah. that, you know, apparently Bill Clinton was on a million times and the attorney, you know, the um, 
Alan Dershowitz. Alan Dershowitz, all these other famous people, and and, and Prince Andrew, and all, all these people that have been on the flight logs. She said that that plane is completely wired for audio and visual surveillance. Right. And from the victims and victims slash survivors, the sex and orgy shit happen on that plane all the time. Multiple girls, oh. multiple powerful men, girls underage. I think, I think you there's cameras at the the sub. What, what you just think he blackmailed them all? Is yes, that, yeah. I think that, like, I think, there, you know, there's a school of thought that these, you know, definitely they're children. Okay, they are children, but I think that maybe they were even presented to these powerful people as. She's very young. Hey, you know, she's 18, but she's gorgeous, da da da. Right. And then afterwards, like, oh, you don't want to give me um, $5 million to invest in this thing? She was actually 16. Oh. That blew you last night. Wow. I never thought about that. I, I think mean, he's that's, so fucking dirty. Because you're not me. making it off $200 a massage. No. You're not. I, I mean, because I know he was like invested in, like, I mean, whatever the, the how they say yeah. he's rich, but then like, you don't, you don't get like private island rich without. And it's like, I do think there's some people on those flight logs, uh, you know, mm -hmm. that didn't know and that, like, oh, used totally. his plane to go to, like, do charity events and shit. Like, those guys are rich. No, I don't. So all these people right. are, like, involved in different ways, but there's definitely some people that she may, like, be able to take down. I mean, not. Yes. I, I mean, she's a terrible person, so I, yes. don't, I don't want her to get, like, a deal, but. No. If she can. Um, no, she is a terrible person because yeah. the other thing that. There's no chance that she didn't She know. would little, from according to these um, eyewitnesses that are all part of this case, this one girl, she was a, um, met them at her grad, she was an art student and at her graduate show, the two of them approached her and said, we love your art. We'd like you to uh, make art for our house and also um curate art for the house so i mean can you imagine you're 22 you graduated from art school like who gets a great job like that yeah so she gets sucked into this world and she witnessed a lot and one of the things she witnessed is she'd be at the house working on whatever figuring out art installations whatever and g max would go oh my god it's three o'clock time to go recruiting and she would go out to the schools which a lot of the the victims said is how they met Epstein was through her, go to the schools as they're getting out, and she would say, you're so pretty. Have you considered being a model? Come to this address, and then he, they would use that connection where he was, you know, tied into the Victoria's Secret um, CEO guy. Right. Which in the Netflix special, it's revealed in that one that he, he like, took – hundred million or a couple hundred million from that guy and the guy just kind of like let it go and there's rumors like were they having a sexual relationship between Epstein and this um and the Victoria's Secret who knows are some people just so embarrassed that they allowed this guy to be in charge of their money even though he took the money they're just like fuck it I don't care I want, just don't even want anything to do with this person right. I don't even want to try to get my money back because I want to like you know disassociate I myself I was, yeah yeah so um Yes, she absolutely was a recruiter of these girls and lured them in. And there was one of the the survivors said that she was like she was involved in like a sex act. But like, oh yes, she, no, there were a couple. The, so that yeah. same girl was assaulted, the art student, but she was over eighteen at the time. Assaulted by both of them. So was her younger sister, who real who was sixteen and got really fucked up by the by them assaulting her. So and then gross. the girl that you're talking about, Virginia Roberts, mm -hmm. she's the main one. And yes, they. Assaulted her numerous times. She was the one who was sex trafficked three times to Prince Andrew, according to her, you know, uh, testimony. And um, yes, yeah, so then apparently when she was arrested in this beautiful home in where was it? Bridgehampton. Or, yeah, or yeah. Northampton. I don't somewhere, know. Or not Some place it's somewhere in New, Jer New Jersey. No, up north. I don't know. Anyway, when Connecticut. She, when she was arrested, Somewhere. she was shocked. She was Maybe. crying. How can this happen? And I'm just really confused why she ever left Europe to even come here. Why did she think that she, like, that was a good idea? Like, if I was in her position I, and the Netflix doc just came out, I'd be like, maybe not the greatest time to go um, rent that Airbnb mansion yeah. in America. Well, and she and she wasn't like in hiding there, right? She was just there, or was she hiding? She was in plain her? sight, but they were following her, and you know, and so I don't know if so, so maybe she was tricked by someone, someone being like, "No, you're fine. Come, no, it's never going to happen. We're all good." But but a couple of weeks ago, I saw that they were they were 
there was um, news saying that they were trying to um, keep the the her testimony and all her non disclosures and everything from when he was prosecutor back in two thousand and six. They were trying to keep that secret. And the other side, the prosecutors were trying to open it. So if you already knew there were some rumblings going on, yeah. why the hell would you come back here? It, I don't know. And then and the other woman in there, that Sarah Kellen, or Kel, you know, that she was in the Netflix doc, she was like the other, like, a recruiter, allegedly, at least. Oh, yes. She's like married to a, a, like a NASCAR driver guy. All the other players that aren't as big as she, because yeah. she was sort of his friendship companion girlfriend and this one woman goes oh they'd present each other like they were boyfriend girlfriend but i knew that she wasn't his girlfriend and then australian goes why did you know that and she goes because she wasn't 12 oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And, i mean i think that um yeah with those other girls they all none of them got in trouble i mean they all were uh saved for for they were had to interview but they were what do you call it given um like a plea deal or something or given or a, um, immunity immunity okay they all went on to like marry one percenters yeah i mean they I, all maybe it was no, a NASCAR, one but she's married yo, to some, it there's is a, one yeah. who's married to a nascar person there's another who's like a decorator and married to someone else they all are like hamptony one percenter now 30 something year old blonde blue-eyed beautiful wives now my question is this if yes. you're the NASCAR driver guy or whoever else is married to these women, did you know about the past or did you see the documentary and go, uh, oh, what the fuck, dude? You, you were like a recruiter for Jeffrey Epstein? Like, is there a moment or... I know. What is the conversation? I agree. Like, did you know? Or or is it something just like anything else that you could have gone, look, I got sucked into this world because one of the girls that went on to marry some one percenter, I, I found some article from a long time ago where she was hanging out with some other girl from the Hamptons. And she was like, oh, my boyfriend, Jeffrey Epstein. And she was like 21. And she kind of saw herself as the girlfriend. And she was like, ooh, I got to show my my boyfriend, Jeffrey, this. I love the Hamptons. And this, oh, we should get a house here. And like he had like a lot of these, he had a lot of girls that were sort of his companions that were clearly like, Paid companions, you know, mm -hmm. but they were like, you know, young girls, but they weren't 12. They weren't 15. And um, and then those I don't know where those girls went. And I don't know if they're embarrassed or I don't know if they or just try just to gave say them a bunch of money or something. Or are they then... or are they saying to their boyfriend, like, listen, you know, I, I went to some parties. You know, a lot of these people we said like, yeah, you're hey, want to come on a private jet? You know, I've been to some people's houses that I don't know. I didn't Google their whole criminal history before I went there. Like, I can yeah. see when it's a big party and someone's like, come, oh, my God, it's going to be crazy. There's yeah. going to be these really interesting people here. Don't you want to come? You know, OK. And now you're you're in photos and now you're on this list. Right. And that's and why obviously, it's kind of weird when yes. someone's like, well, look who's in this photo. Or look who's in that. Yes. Like when I was making fun of the Eric Trump thing, it's like, well, your dad's in photos with him, too. That doesn't mean that right. he was involved. Like, we have no idea. You have to, like. You know, but yeah, or Harvey some Weinstein people, or anything. Yeah, like you don't know. Oh yeah, or yeah, going yes, to the Weinstein party. Yes, I mean, party. of course, you know? or you're at the Oscars and you're talking to someone, and you know, you're trying to hammer, you're talking to the wife, and then someone's like, "Can we get a photo? Are you ever going to be like, no?" Because actually, I heard that um, he's like could be a rapist. It hasn't come out yet, but in case this comes out in six years, I don't want the photo. I'm like, of course, you're just going to well, take from, the photo. It would just yeah. mean nobody can ever take a photo <laughs> again because something might. So yeah, it's like it's like there's a lot of photos and a lot of people in them, and we don't know who did what yet. Yes, but she, G Max. I don't. I like just hope <laughs> G Max lives because there's a lot of memes that are like, "May she rest in peace." Later next week. I know. And I mean, if she, quote unquote, commits suicide, <laughs> uh, uh, on this watch again. I mean, it's gonna be just so like come. On. Like there was no... an article that I didn't realize was fake news yesterday that came out that said that when she was in custody, her eyes were watery, she was coughing, and she was tested for COVID, and it's very bad, and they suspect it's going to be so bad that she'd have to go on a ventilator. And I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me? Then you know she's going to die." Well, no, that came out today. No, she does not a... have COVID. That was a fake news story. There's going to be a lot of fake news stories that we're going to have to like filter Sift through. through. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> During all of this. Um, yeah, I, <sighs> but I hope that this is like, what I hope from the, the, this arrest is that it leads to actually something that can get these women 
not peace because they're okay, probably I never gonna do... have peace, but something like just something of like, see, I fucking been tr- screaming that this guy did this to me for years. She knew about it, and now these motherfuckers, even though he can't ever pay the price, you know. I'm gonna be one of the really beautiful one um, percent women. Okay. That were in some shady shit with him back in the day. Okay. Um, and we're on a first date or something? No, oh. we've been married now for like seven years. Oh, okay. You're my husband. Yeah. And um, we have two little babies. We have several homes. You're making me play the guy all day today. Okay, I'll be the no, guy. No, I don't want to be. I don't want to be her. I'd rather be the guy now. I don't want to be her. Okay, I know. I want to be the guy. All right. I'm sorry that the, nobody became a lesbian. <laughs> I'm surprised they haven't. Okay, but all right. So, um, you know, we're just getting our summer plans together. Um, and we have like two little kids and five nannies. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, honey. Uh, so it's just, you know, have you ever heard of Netflix? Um, yes, of course, I've yeah. heard of Netflix. So I was just watching this documentary. Yeah. About uh, this guy Jeffrey Epstein. Stein. Um, Doesn't ring a bell. No. Oh, no. that's weird. Um, well. I had an eye doctor when I was younger named Dr. Epstein. He was my dad's best friend. But no, I don't know any other mm. Epsteins. Why? Well, you were just in the documentary. Oh. Um, yeah. And seems like you knew him and he wasn't, didn't look, he never checked your eye, eyes or anything. Um, so I don't think that was like the same guy that was your doctor. But like, I just I don't like, know, honey. <laughs> I know a lot of people. Like, I had a life before you. I, you know, I, I was a student. I was a socialite. What are you getting at? I mean, I was a student too, but I didn't end up in a Netflix documentary about a guy that had an island uh, for, that for sexual predators. So I was just curious if, like, you, you know, forgot about it, or like maybe you could have thrown that out there when we went out, or like before we got married. What that I that I went on a private jet, that I know some rich people, and I went to an island. Who the fuck? Hasn't done that, okay? Everybody knows people with private jets and private islands with a lot oh. of pretty girls. When you look like me, it's the M.O. What, do you think that you, you would have liked me if I was 400 pounds and didn't know about people with islands? Um, well, that's a weird spin. But I, I just think, like, maybe, you know, no, I don't think everyone knows someone with a private jet. And you just would have, like, mentioned that at some point. Because all you said was, like, you went to school and then you met me. And that's, like, the whole – all you told me about your past, which in retrospect was fishy. I should have dug a little deeper. But um, – I don't could... know what you want to do about it now. We have two kids. We have a – I have a, a very successful blog. Well, you might want I don't know if you want to give that up. Do you want to maybe lock their Netflix <laughs> accounts? Because, like, this is on Netflix, which is, a lot, like, a lot oh of Oh, my people... God. It's, like, two pictures of me. With this guy, Epstonian, and a girl mm. named Galene Gal- Galatigo. I don't know. No. I went to one they or call, 18 I they call parties. I don't know. You right. know, it's a blur. I was doing some cocaine to stay thin so that I looked good when you met me. Oh, oh. You know, so sorry that I look amazing and you fell in love with me and you didn't think to ask enough questions before I got knocked up. I'm sorry. Oh, no. Such it's... a horrible life you have <laughs> being married to this. Well, so if you so you were on drugs is what you're saying, and that's why you don't remember. Yeah, how like, do you that's think a great... you, How do you think you stay a size zero when you're pregnant? Well, that's, oh, well... That's why little Richie looks funny sometimes. <laughs> um, if we could just like maybe you could tell our friends who are all calling me now asking why I'm married to a person who uh, maybe was involved in sex trafficking. If maybe you could tell them that you were just in a coke blackout that whole time and forgot to tell me that would make me feel better about going to work at NASCAR tomorrow where everyone's going to want to know why the fuck I didn't know about this. Are you going to ask why Prince Andy's in my phone too? Is that going to be the next fucking question? Prince Andrew's in your phone? <laughs> oh, you didn't know that? I thought you already called on... him Andy? I thought you already went on my iCloud and that's what this was about. Oh, well. Um Yeah. Um So we're good. Yeah. 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 No. I think you know what? It's the quarantine's been hard. Y- you know what? You're right. It's and been I'm, really hard and I'm I think reading that way too much into this I whole think documentary. You are. I think yeah. you should start looking on like Hulu and Amazon has really great stuff. Right. Maybe I should just watch something lighter like The Handmaid's yeah. Tale. Or, right. Yeah. Just something else that's just like I don't know why it's like, ooh, this depressing. It is depressing. You're right. We don't need this. We yeah. we are gonna go to the Hamptons. And we're going to, we got that yacht. Yeah, that's true. Do you have any cocaine? Because I could, I feel like I need something. Of course something. I do. Yeah, of thank you. Of course I do. But like, don't, like, let's not, you know, we have such a good thing going. Right. That's you Just know what? not asking questions about each yeah. other's lives. Like, I had a DUI, you know, and you didn't leave me over that. No, so you of course not. A guy that 
did some stuff. Exactly. Yeah. You were in a fraternity. Yeah. I know. Right. Exactly. Are we going to start going through every frat party well, you went no. to? Oh, the, How many day raids happened beer, there? Oh, the beer pong <laughs> that I, mean, I used to do. Yeah. But I didn't actually so, ever day rape anyone. Just for the You know record. what? You're my life partner. Oh. <laughs> LP, switch me to LP in your phone. Let's just follow their lead. Seems to yeah. work out great for them. It really does. Let's take the don't ask, don't tell policy. <laughs> okay, let's adopt that since the military left it. It's yeah. going to be ours now. Oh, that's a good idea. Thank you. All right, let's get into some other fun stuff. That was fun. That was fun. That was fun just to talk about the horribleness of <laughs> sex <laughs> trafficking and making a fun improv out of it. Um, I just want you to look at this person. <laughs> Hey, this is oh, tiny waist. This is Kylie Jenner's makeup artist. Okay. Now anyone can do whatever they want with themselves. That's a cozy little and, um, sweatpant outfit. Well, it's Kim Kardashian's Skims loungewear, oh. and what he is wearing is a, like a high waisted G underwear, which it pushed down a tiny, tiny waist. Such a tiny waist. He likes to, to use M sculpt um, his nails. You know, again. Do whatever you want, be whatever you want. But people are actually transitioning into Kylie. It's okay if you're transitioning or not transitioning or you're just like right, expressing but, but yourself. Like, but, the, but when you're like, like transitioning to, like a, to a whole other human being that already exists on this earth. Right. Like, like to look I, just like Kylie or a Kim or a whoever. Yeah. Well, I think it's interesting that, you know, she's got several people around her and I'm sure they're all really good friends and stuff. But I remember when I had some friends in high school and one girl got a bando top and then she wore a jean jacket over it. And I was like, hmm, I think I'll try wearing a bando top with a jean jacket over it. Cute. Cute look. That was our day. Maybe you steal your friend's style. Right. Maybe you're like, But now yeah. you want to steal your friend's face. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but now we have the ability to steal. And their ass. Yeah. And their waist. And their, and their literal body. Like their body shape. You can actually go, okay, let me just actually, yeah, make the face the same how come I, I work out all the time? I ride my Peloton like it's fucking taking me somewhere. Yeah. And I can't <laughs> I can't lose one pound and everyone else can just do it. Like, I, there's no way the M sculpt and stuff like that really works. It, like I, that. I think it does. But I also I mean, think sucking it out and cutting it open and sucking it out and putting it in different places right. really does work. Right. That's true. That seems aggressive for me. I think yeah. I'm just sticking my Peloton. It's like have, if you took a piece of clay... Poop. And you made a little waste out of it, and you took the clay and you you put it on the butt. Yeah, no, they do. Well, even like um, on uh, on ninety day. Yeah. Like, have you seen um, uh, you know, Larissa? Uh, Larissa. Yeah. Oh yes. Well, let's get oh wait. Let's she get to like that. Completely changed her entire body face, and I'm like, where she's getting? Where's she getting the money? Wait, I'm gonna go right to um, Sorry, that. Right. No, over. I'm gonna jump over, and then I'm gonna go back to Real Housewives of New York because I wanted to get through that too. But let's talk about. First, let's do, okay. There's a few shows. There's like 12 90 day shows. I on. know it's hard to keep but up. But 90 day the I other way, I do kind of enjoy. I do. Oh, I love them. We all. have our first gay couple, Kenny. male gays. Yes. Okay. Kenny and Armando. And I love them so much. He he's 57 years old. The American. I know. And he gay looks, guy. He's so cute. He looks like he's 40. And he he's, looks a little bit like Chris Frangiola. Yes. Yeah. And he is le crying. He cried leaving his family. Yeah. He's got like three or four kids, a grandchild. He fell in love with a, like a 24-year-old, a 25-year-old guy who lives in Mexico who also has a son from his first marriage. They were both married before to women, had their kids. And well, why? His, no, he, his, so Kenny's, um, Kids are from a friend. Like they decided to have kids together. Oh wait, he as wasn't married to a woman. No, I looked it up because oh. I was like, I thought I don't. Maybe they got married as, but it, but either way, they were like friends who were like, let's have kids together. They were okay. like close friends. He he was gay. Like she knew it. They were. They just decided to have like a relation, like have kids together because he didn't know how else to have them. Okay. Or how else he was so gonna anyways, have? You know. I still I don't understand why half these people are going to the other country. I know. Well, it, because like. Kenny has to go through so much. It's clear that it's a harder culture to be out in for him because he's had to. He came out to his parents. They're both the one, the guy who lives in San Felipe, yeah. Felipe, Mexico, yeah, or Armando, yeah, whoever I said, yeah. It seems like it would be easier for him to come yes. here and have um, less eyes, you know, less feeling judged. Like unless it seems they, like in the unless area, they applied. The okay, I have a in. theory. They applied for that. 
Oh. And then TLC said, you know what? That that cast is already full. Would you consider going and hanging out in Mexico for five weeks of shooting? And what you guys do with after that, right. fine. But then at least or you maybe, can be on the other way. Or maybe it was easier for him to get the visa to go to Mexico instead of the guy to get the visa to come well, I here. Also, maybe that was easier. Yeah, but you can't get married in Mexico. Like, right, I understand why some people are going there to get married in that country because then the American is married to an Ethiopian and then together as a married couple, they can come over to right. America easier than the 90-day fiancé K-1. Right. But in Mexico, it is my understanding that gay marriage is not legal. So what would be the point of going there? Right. Except hmm. to get on the show. Right. They but are a cute I, couple, and I really hope And they. I think they love each other, but No, they still, definitely do. But no, but it's, it just seems harder because, like... Why would you? Yeah. yeah. And it's not like it's, like, like Cabo or something that's, like, more... Yeah, it's like a small town it, with yeah, a little a, bit more of a... Yeah, it's a very small town with, like, I don't think a lot of resources or... Anyway, then there's this other couple. He's a weird... I don't even know. He's, he's tall, and she's from Colombia, and he cheated on her, but he's still going to go over there and... Oh right, her. and he like was, and then his friend, her friends, his friends got so mad at him when he said I cheated on her. Did you see that? Her, her friends were like, "I'm disappointed in you." Yeah, which was great. I was like, "Good," you know. But they were like, and then he was crying, and he's like, "I said I'm sorry," and they were like, "Fine, I guess." Right. Like, yeah. So he's going over to Colombia. Then there's this other girl who went to like Ethiopia on some type of like goodwill mission, met this Ethiopian guy, g fell in love, got pregnant. He already has another child. And now she is about to give birth, and the mom's like, I don't know how I feel about her giving birth to my grandchild in Ethiopia. Are the hospitals as good there? I don't mean to be a bitch, but it's not Cedar sinai Yeah, NICU, I mean, yeah, you no, know? yeah, like, yeah. It's, no, it's definitely going to be a less developed hospital. Like, it's not going to be as great. So, but if that's your concern, what's that's amazing your concern. is that he is another... Uh, guy, we've had now a couple on this series that is from the African type of countries that is also a singer. He has his, he's also in the recording studio. He just started his song. He said, yes. I, he's like, this is my first song. And I it's was called like, Yen Yen. Yeah, you can tell. Yen, Yen 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 Yen. Okay, then this is great. So there's this other girl, and I think she had one child with someone before, but then she fell in love with this guy from South Korea. South Korea, yeah. And they have another they have uh, they had a baby and now she and her mom are coming over to live there for good. And I mean this scene was amazing. It was, I mean just it was, don't take your mom if she's going <laughs> to act like that. Like just don't take her. Like just don't take your mom. And like she so the, she was embarrassed. They're in the car so and much. she's screaming yeah. at the woman saying you're driving wrong and it's like, "Well, you are in their country." Yeah. And they go to their place. It doesn't look great. No, I mean, even the mom, the, the his mom um, was the like. The Korean mom, yeah, yeah. you probably should have checked. She's like, are you sure? Did you check and his it's place like, out And he's like a, a delivery guy. Yeah. I, mean, I, I What are you thinking? I All these people. I don't know, but I was just like, what, this mom started throwing a fit. Who, by the way, is like beautiful. She looks just, I mean, they look just alike. But I was just like, why are you like, just don't take your mom on the show. She's going to embarrass you like this. Because you just make you know. Because yeah. her mom's even like, I guess I sound like a spoiled American. And you're like, yeah, kind of. Just like quit screaming at this woman for driving her van through the small streets of South Korea. Like she knows how to drive there better than you do. Just trust her. It's fine. But, I mean, oh God, Colty. Colty. Colty's back on the other show, Happily Ever After. And um, he got a sponsorship with Third Love Bra. And anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. It's called a joke, people. Relax. <sighs> Anyway, Colty is with his mother, Debbie, his life partner. Yeah. And um, <laughs> he found another hot Brazilian who is a nanny here. And Larissa, who is the Colty, and she's back. I mean, they do utilize the best people to bring back somehow. Yeah. And so she, Larissa, finds out that he's talking to this girl, Jessica, or Jesse. She lives in, like, Chicago, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And she calls him, <laughs> calls the girl yeah. to, to warn her. And she goes... So does Colty ever keep his phony away from you? And the girl's like, oh, yes, sometimes he does. Well, that's because he's talking to other girls, you know. She goes, welcome to the club. Yeah, <laughs> welcome to the club. And then she goes, Colty's like a whaley that everyone look and feel bad for. A whaley. A whale. 
I mean, she looks so different. It freaks me out. Like, the, if you look at the photos of her, if, like, go back and watch the old episodes. And then she goes in and she gets the M sculpt. She gets the boobs. She gets. I have to say, how? great work. I know, but great how? Work. How does she pay for this? I think it's OnlyFans. I think she's doing only fun fans now. Oh, okay. I'm just like I'm always like, how do you fucking pay for this? Um, so yeah. that so she is like, he ruined my life. He tried to kick me out with the cold tea, and she goes, "Have you talked to the Debbie? Have you met the Debbie?" And the Jesse's like, "No, I have not met Debbie." You know, and so they're going over to Brazil. He's bringing Debbie. Oh, and then he has this other girl come over that is his neighbor. That's very attractive, and he goes, "Yeah, we had sex once." Right after she was going through a divorce. And I'm like, who is fucking him? I don't know. Cause, and, and and it's not even just, it's not really about his appearance. It's about his delivery. Like, he's so, oh, yes. it's he's so, so weird. weird. He just seems yeah. like he's about to, like, maybe murder you in your sleep. He just, like, yeah. he kind of is, like, expressionless and kind of, like. But have you noticed, too, this well, He's season... like this. Like, when he wears his glasses. <laughs> and he's like this. He goes, well, um, it's very difficult for my mother, Debbie, because we're best friends. And I am going to go visit my new girlfriend, who's Brazilian, named Jessie. She's here being a nanny, but that's going to expire about six months. What she doesn't know <laughs> is that I'm still talking to Larissa, and I had sex once with my neighbor. My mother would like me to have a, more of a relationship with my neighbor, but it wasn't reciprocal. But my neighbor's going to come here and watch the cats <laughs> while my mother, Debbie, and I go <laughs> to Brazil to vis visit Jessie. And this time, I really hope it works out. <laughs> So good. That is so good. It's so creepy. He's just so weird. So creepy. And have you noticed this one thing I've noticed on this yeah. season of of in two couples? Last season, Debbie was like, you know, defensive of Colt and screaming at yeah. Larissa all the time. And last season, Paul's mom was like, she's the one, like Paul and Karina. Yeah. She's the one that gave like Paul her hair before he went to go to the Amazon. And this season, both the moms hate those guys. They hate their sons. Like, yes. They're like, over they their went, sons. They went from being like the overbearing mom to like, like, like Paul's mom now is like, get, you're fucking disgusting. Why is anybody with you? I fucking hate you. Get out of my house. Like, she's like, you're not fucking living with me. Get your shit. Get your shit old car and leave. And Debbie's like, oh, just fuck off. Like, go go wherever. She's I don't like, care. really? Yeah. Another Brazilian? I don't have a problem where anybody's from. But the Brazilian thing didn't work out with Larissa. Did you have to try another Brazilian? Yeah. Ugh. Maybe mix in, you know, just anything else. Oh, my God. I just love how the moms are just like, I love it. People. Angela and Michael. <laughs> She's finally going to go over there and get married. Now, I get it. So that she, once she marries him there in Nigeria, she can then she him. can bring him back here. Yes. And she's got six grandchildren that she's in charge of and a dying mother. Oh, her mom makes me so sad. Too. I know. And... And so she has two daughters. One, let me remind you, is in prison for oh. um, having sex with a underage boy. What? Several of them. Yes. Yes. That's why she's watching six kids. And her other daughter, three of the kids is that daughter's. And I think three of the kids is this daughter's. That daughter obviously has to stay home and watch six kids and the grandma. And But she needs one American witness to witness the wedding. Now, I don't know why... The, the cast of TLC and the all the audio people can't be one of those people. So she's going to bring her <laughs> friend. You're like, we have 15 camera guys. Yeah. One of them can't be a witness. <laughs> and it's filmed on a TV show. But she's got to bring her friend. So her friend agreed to come to the big wedding. And um, wait, I'm going to get back to them real quick. And she's but, helping her, like, pick out the suit. But here is the wedding gown. And her her grandkids go, oh, you're beautiful. And she goes, My, I'm going to bring home Michael Papa for you. And so the kids are cute. Oh They're excited. Um, this is this couple is oh my god, Azuli Lu and Lu. and Kalania. Remember, he was from Samoa. Sam or they say it's not Samoa. Samoa. It's, it's like Samoa. Yeah, it's something it's else. Samoa. He Samoa. hates his life. <laughs> hates his life. <laughs> he always looks like he's about to fall asleep or cry. And like always looks like that. Like. And she's got two little babies. He does nothing. And then she goes, I do so much. And he goes, it's not hard because in America, a machine does the laundry, a dishwasher clean dishes, a baby you put in front of TV. To be an American mom is easy. Oh, yeah. He's so she's fucking her and her mom are about to kill him. Yeah. 
And he, they go on. He want he wants to take the two babies and go to this country. And the doctor's like, your younger one isn't ready for the vaccination shot in order to travel. So I suggest you don't travel. And he's like, okay, then I'm going to be an asshole on the Airbnb trip to California. So they go to California. It's a horrible car ride. And he's just like, he's like so like his eyes are like his eyes are always red. Like, he looks like he's always about to fall asleep. Or like I think I'm just like, what are you tired from? But he also, why doesn't he just go if he misses? I mean, I know he wants to bring his kids. I know he wants to introduce them. But yeah. he is really homesick, and it is kind of sad. Why doesn't yes. he just go home by himself and not worry about the vaccinations? Like he can go home for a little bit. And then, well, he and he gets they get be thrilled. They get to the Airbnb. And he picks a, an unripe orange off the tree and he eats it. And, they and get, it looks like he's trying to choke it down the whole time, like he hates it. <laughs> and he's like, no, it's good. And so she's, so they get in another fight. And then he just takes off. And the producers start running. And he goes, the producer goes, where are you going? And he's at a, is a, at a bus stop, like across the street. And he goes, looks at the bus driver who's female. And he just goes, I'm going with her. <laughs> what? Like, she's just another woman that's going to take him. I'm like, he is. They're like, are you going to Utah? He's like, I don't know. I'm going wherever she's going. And he just, hop, he takes off his bike and he just hops on the bus. And he's like, I, I thought this was fun. I knocked up this girl when she came to me on vacation. I did one fire dance. We fucked. Yeah. I thought it'd be fun. I'm on a show. I'm fucking miserable. I just ate an unripe orange. <laughs> Just want to go home. I'm going to try to get this this bus lady to marry me. <laughs> and take I don't. Yes, yeah. it's amazing. It is amazing. No, it's and they're, amazing. And she's very um. She's very patient with him. For yes, like he seems you know. And I understand that his uh, uh, culture is different, so that's why he, you know, has a little bit of a <laughs> sexist streak in him. I guess. Yes. Like but it's just it's exhausting. I mean, she's running around with those two kids, and he's just like, I'm tired. I played a video game earlier. You're like, dude, come on. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I did watch them while they took a nap. What? Shut up. Okay, so I know you're not up to Real Housewives in New York, but I'm going to share with you. Yes, no, I like it when you fill me in. So it's Ramona's birthday, and every time it's her birthday, she has a really great birthday for about 60 to 80 friends of mine. I really got some great girlfriends. So she invites Dorinda and Sonia to go to this like party planning place, and Dorinda's pissed because she's like, why did we go there? It was like a PR move for the for Ramona to get a free trip. And I'm like, you know what, Ramona? You know, you're just an asshole. You're just an asshole. And Ramona's like, why can't I just have a beautiful party for myself? Just because you don't have 60 girlfriends, you know, Dorinda. Don't be jealous of me. <laughs> so she goes, she's single, Ramona. And she goes to meet Rory, who is a uh, dating expert, which I'm going to talk to uh, tomorrow about setting her up. And she says... Now, what do you want, Ramona? Do you want, like, companionship or do you want money? And she goes, I just want someone who has a lifestyle like me, you know, that likes to go on yachts, that likes private planes, that has, like, so, you know, winter in Aspen, summer, you know, in wherever, in the in the south of France. And that's what I want. Like, somebody that, like, you know, I want a best friend. She's like, so you want a best friend who's rich? Who's rich. Yeah, yeah. good luck. <laughs> right. Okay? It's, you can't have Maybe it all. find one of those. Well, you know what? Then I won't. You know, I'll just have fun with myself and my girlfriends. So... Elise is her friend who has some great one-liners, okay? And she says, she's like, mm, I feel like Ramona doesn't have, you know, I I'm there when she's sad. But when she's not sad, I don't have a jet. I don't have a yacht. I don't have a place in Aspen. And I can't do plastic surgery on me. So she really has no use for me. And I'm like, wow, that sucks. But I would love a friend that had a jet and a yacht. Yeah. And could do plastic surgery on me. But that wasn't involved in a... a pedophile ring like, yes yeah, yes if you could just find... why is that so hard <laughs> well that's what Ramona's trying to do you yeah. know <laughs> that, that does suck for this girl to be the one that's like oh well I guess she's she just cries she calls me when she's sad but when she gets when she goes to Aspen I don't get and the then fucking she said, phone call she said another great line she goes you know in the town of Ramonaville there's a lot of one-way streets kind of profound that is professor pretty like, good. yeah she came up with some good ones she Dorinda should, and her, she sit, and her daughter, Hannah. And she's like, Hannah, yeah. And Hannah's like, you're, you're great, whatever. Then we've got Leah. Her daughter is hilarious. She's a 13-year-old daughter. And the daughter just discovered that she didn't go to college. That was kind of funny. Okay, then they go to the Halloween. Okay, the Halloween party. And Ramona is there. And unbeknownst to everybody, 
uh, Sonia has been drinking vodka sodas since four o'clock with her glam squad, mm. as one does on yeah. Halloween night. Yeah. It's a national holiday for my glam squad and me. <laughs> so she comes in hot, and the theme is voodoo, okay? I was so going to say, all, what are their outfits? They're like, all dressed as voodoo, and what's kind of shitty is that Ramona brings this girl named Missy, and Missy used to date Luann's ex-husband, who she was only married to for one year. Okay. And she's made some appearances on the show. But that's Ramo- that's Ramona's friend. She's a really great girlfriend. She's one of my 60 best girlfriends. <laughs> and she's going to come to the Luann Halloween party. So then there's this guy, Ron. And he's what I referred to earlier as a fixture. Back in the day, I'd go to a club. I'd have two kids. I'd go back to the club. The same fixture would be there. That's right. what this guy is. Right. It's just like... <sighs> It's like a weirdo. Like you're like when you first see him, you're like, oh, why is that older guy that's decent looking single? And then you talk to him and you're like, mm, I get it, weirdo. Okay. <laughs> so um oh, and then these two guys come, Andrew, and Ramona goes, Oh my god, you look hysterical. Is that how did you get that fake poochy stomach? And he goes, It's me, I'm in love. Oh. She's like, Oh god, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, so then Sonia comes in wasted and they have a big seafood platter and she goes, Oh, I love a crustacean platter. Who's who's got the who's got the seafood platter? <laughs> and she's so wasted and she starts to um wait for oh then we see that Jill Zarin, who was an original housewife, yes, she comes to the party and they introduce her as Jill Zarin, Luann's friend. Oh, come on. <laughs> How dare you, Bravo, insult us like yeah, that? You should, it should it's say not even, the OG housewife. It's not it. even insulting to Jill Zarin. It's insulting to the people that I've put in the last decade of watching this fucking show. Yes. Anyway, she shows up, and then Luann is going to be a... Um, she goes, I'm going to be an old French aristocrat. Aristocrat, sorry. And the makeup artist goes, oh, do you want like the white face makeup? And she's like, oh, No. And I just thought that was funny, funny because she got a lot of heat a couple of years ago. She went as Diana Ross, and oh. she went tan, oh. very tan. Got it. So and like, so don't. I think she was like, hmm, I don't want to insult any of the pale French people. Right. So she learned her lesson. Okay, so then, <laughs> from, so Sonia brings this voodoo doll. She goes, this is you, Ramona. This is you with this little doll. And she starts hitting it in front of Ramona. Ramona's like, What's wrong with you, Sonia? And she goes, you know what, Ramona? You just, you just don't care. You just don't care. You're just not a good friend. And she's like, okay. You know, she's like, it's, we got really weird. And then Dorinda starts to give her some shit. And, and she goes, you know, you know what? Because, Ramona, you should have a party celebrating you and Sonia. You've got a birthday five days apart. Why don't you have Sonia be part of your birthday? And Ramona's like, you know what? I just want to have something for me, okay, Dorinda? Like, why are you attacking me? Are you drunk? Now, there's nothing that you can say that'll piss off Dorinda more than accusing her of being drunk. Oh, okay. Because she usually is. Right. Okay? That's usually how it works. If you get pissed off about <laughs> something, it's because you're like, yeah, fuck yeah, I am. You're not <sighs> saying it. Yeah. So she's pissed. This guy's like, um, how long do I have to stand here with this drink? Okay. <laughs> and this girl, Leah, now in real life, we see that she's 90 days sober. Today. Congrats. Okay. Prior to the show, she was nine years sober. And she got on the show and thought that would be a great time to start drinking again. And for the audience, it was. Right. <laughs> We've thoroughly enjoyed her alcoholism. So... <laughs> So she says, so Dorinda says something that wasn't even like an insult. And Leah goes, shots fired! Like at a rally, at a restaurant. And everyone's like, why are you so? And, and so this is what, so she had fallen off the wagon and this is her during. Oh, she's been drinking during the whole okay. filming. Got it. Okay. She literally had her first drink the first day of filming after being sober for nine years. And did she acknowledge it? Was she like, I'm just done being yeah. sober? Or was she just like, I don't think I have a problem. So I'm just. Yeah. Kind of like back that. into drinking. And, yeah, got it. And probably knowing that <laughs> if I want to stay on the show, this might be the best time to fall off the wagon. The still okay? <laughs> shots fired is amazing. So this is Gary, who I love. This Because I know Gary and Jill in real life. And <laughs> Gary, they see all this gross food. He's like, this is one place, to, this is one way to stay thin. Because it's like all this like octopus and all this shit, um, this food. Okay, so then Dorinda does something, another shitty thing to Ramona. This guy, Andrew, I guess Ramona fucked once or something. Okay. And he's like 35, whatever. Ramona looks great. She's like 62. And 
to her. He goes, did you see who I sat next to you, Ramona? Andrew. You happy now? You happy, Ramona? You like sitting next to Andrew? And Ramona is just like, what the fuck what is, is happening? Look at, look at her face. She's just such a fucking like evil thing. Yeah, and it doesn't help that makeup and like the outfit just makes her look <laughs> more like a, like a mean person. Leah's getting wasted. She takes the octopus, tries to rub it on her pussy or something. I don't know. Um, oh, okay. So then the final thing is I mean, Dorinda gets up and she goes, I'd like to make a toast. As a woman with, as a strong woman. Everyone's like, what? She goes, what do you think when you show up at a party and you talk to your friend and your friend accuses you, the first thing she says, instead of addressing the issue about her being an asshole, Ramona, is to say, are you drunk, Dorinda? What do you all think of that? And it's like Ramona's just sitting there. And the whole thing is Ramona wanted this party to start at 730. You know why? Because she had another party to go to. Um. And I often say Ramona is my spirit animal if Peter died. Right. Okay? I'd be fucking out there. And I'd want to go to Omar's new opening too. Okay. Yeah. Omar is a friend of hers. He's having a big, beautiful party with a lot of really – some of my yacht friends are all going to be there. <laughs> and I really kind of wanted to get this Luann party over early so that, like, Missy and I could go and have a really great time with some really fabulous people. And now I'm here at this party and Elise is being mean to me and Leah's yelling and putting an octopus on her pussy. And <laughs> this weird guy that I fucked once I don't even remember is sitting next to me and Dorinda's attacking me and Sonia's been drinking since four. And he's like, yo, you know what? I really kind of want to go to Omar's opening. You know, like I want to get – <laughs> out of here. So, anyway, that's where we left off. I mean, that was it's a lot. It's pretty but it's, enjoyable. I don't even need to watch it. It's a I just, like, lot of you... boozing. Yeah, a lot of boozing. Thank God. I for feel that. like they're like a lot of boozing. Throw some crustaceans in there. Put some weird, you know, make them wear costumes, insane costumes, and it works. And you have, and you have a fucking show. Yeah, you have some flashbacks. Probably a lot of footage to go through. It is pretty <laughs> damn good. Um. I loved that um, you're here, Sarah. Thank you. Thanks for Everyone having me. Everyone always loves having you on. Tell them where they can, what's going on with your life. Well, what's happening? Uh, you know, nothing, uh, <laughs> as it is for everyone else. We're all in quarantine. Hey, if live comedy comes back soon. I have some dates on the books in August. So I do I. I don't know if they're going to happen. So do I. SarahColona.com and the links to both my books are there. Oh, get yes. yourself some summertime reading. Yes. get Read the books if you've not. Uh, both are hilarious and both are bestsellers. And, um, and follow Sarah on her social media. And that's it. Thanks for having me, girl. It's always great having you.